This is a NAES ILL system training video on placing interlibrary loan requests. It will cover the basics of how to place a request. For special cases such as travel guides and serials, there are separate videos. For today's video, we will be working as the Birch Public Library. I have already logged into the system as the Birch Interlibrary Loan user. The first thing I need to do to place an interlibrary loan request is to search for the item that I want to borrow. The first request that the Birch Public Library has to fill today is for a book called Creamy and Crunchy, which is a history of peanut butter. So I'm not going to put all the words in, I'm just going to put in sort of keywords to get the thing that I'm after. Now it's brought up a few results right away, but there are still some Z targets out there that have not yet been searched. So I'm going to give it a minute until everything is, is brought up for me. And here I see um, the item that I am interested, Creamy and Crunchy and Informal History of Peanut Butter by John Crampner. There are two records here. One of them has an ebook. I don't want an ebook, but I but it also has regular books attached to it, and that is what I want. So I'm going to place my request on this record, and I am sure this is the thing I want, so I'm not even going to look any further at it. Um, so I will click the request button, and it will open for me the returnable loan screen. And on this screen, I can fill in the information that I need to place my request. So I have to put something in the patron's contact info. The policy at the Birch Public Library is to put a note in here telling me how this patron wants to be contacted. They want to be contacted by text. And this is a request for a patron whose last name is Joaquin. Now, I could put additional information about the patron here, um, their first name, their library card number, and so forth. And if I did that, it would be visible only to the staff at the Birch Public Library. It will not be visible to lenders. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I just don't need to do it. I've got my paperwork to keep track of what I'm doing uh, with this request. If I had a note, it would go here, but I do not. So all I need to do is click Submit. This is interlibrary loan number 8600, and I'm going to make a note of that on the paperwork so that I know um, that Ms. Joaquin's request is uh, this one, and I can come back to it if I need to. And I say OK. Now I'm going to place another request, and this time I am looking for the Song of the Lark by Willa Cather. So I put in the important words to that search string, and I let the system hunt up as many copies as it can find of Song of the Lark by Willa Cather. This is a book that has a lot of editions. It has a lot of copies. Most libraries in the state probably have a copy of this. Um, so I have a wide variety of options available to me here. I could limit my search if I want to, to get fewer um, options in front of me using the facets over here. And I can say I only want a book and it will limit the search results to just books. It still gives me a lot of them, um, but that's okay because it really doesn't make a difference which one I choose. They should all be just fine. Um, I'm going to take this one, which has two records attached to it, and play. And I'm going to take a look at what those records are. This one is a new pack record, and if I click on book, I can see the actual record itself. And I see that this is the Houghton Mifflin edition. It's 580 pages. Um, it looks like a, a good one for what my patron has asked for. So I can go ahead and place a request on this book if I wish to do so. If I want to see another option, I can go back and take a look at other records. Um, or if I was certain just from the new pack that I want to request, I can request from this point right here and place the request at, with that button. It'll bring up the returnable loan screen, just like I saw before. I will put in information about my patron. This one likes to be notified by phone, and their last name is North. And then I need to go down to the bottom of the screen and click Submit. This one is transaction number 8610. And I make a note of that on my paperwork, and I say OK. 
Let's do a third interlibrary loan transaction as well. Let's look for Return to Chaos, um, which is by Craig Gardner. It is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer novel. So when I place this request, and I may have a problem here because I spelled chaos wrong when I typed it, We'll see if it finds something. No, it did not find anything because I spelled chaos wrong. So I'm going to go back up here and fix my spelling and try again. And this time I get um, my results much more quickly. It's still got a few Z targets to search, so I'm going to give it a second to finish that. And now I see that I have a couple of options here. Um, they're both pocketbooks editions. This one has a year, this one does not. So I could place the request on either of them. I want to take a look and see what the difference is to see if, if one is better than the other um, for finding interlibrary loan lenders. So let me click on book to see the display. All right, this is... Um, this is an okay record. It's the thing that I want. It does not look like it has a lot of detail though. So let me go back and look at the other one. And this one, okay, this one is coming from the new pack, which tells me that it's going to be a complete OCLC record. Um, and when I look at it, it has some subject headings, it has the pagination, it has all of the information. So this is a better record and therefore more likely to match to records that are in other systems should there be any more out there. So I'm going to place my request on this one using the request this item button here on the left hand side under the little cover image. Just like with the other buttons that we used for the previous requests, I get the returnable loan screen where I need to put something about my patron's contact info. I'm going to say text, since so this patron likes to be notified by text. And this one is for a patron named Donay. So I'm going to submit my request. I'm going to make a note of my transaction number, which is 8612, on my paperwork, and I say OK. So that is the process for placing requests from a variety of different screens, depending on how much detail you want to research as you're looking at the records. Um, the other thing that I want to do, though, before I finish my interlibrary loan requesting for the day is I want to take a look at my request manager. If there was an issue of any kind with my transactions, I would see them at that point. Um, so it's just a good habit when you've placed your request to go have a look at the request manager and see what's going on. So I'm going to use my quick link, request manager and see what it is that I have going on here. And I can see here that I have, as the borrower, some pending requests, some pending cancels, a variety of different things. So I've asked for a renewal that someone still has to make a decision about. But I can also see that I have an awaiting approval. Anything that's on the borrower side of my screen under action items is something that I as the library um, am supposed to take action on or do something about. So I'm going to take a look and see what this awaiting approval is. And it is my creamy and crunchy request uh, for Ms. Joaquin. And I can tell because it has a little house picture next to it, this little red schoolhousey looking thing. That indicates that my library owns this book. So the interlibrary loan system is double checking that I really want to borrow a book I already have. Um, and I may want to do that, and I am certainly allowed to do that, but the system wants to be sure. It's essentially a message going, hey, you have this. Why are you borrowing it? So checking my paperwork, I can see that someone has already checked our collection and determined that we do own this, but it seems to be missing from the shelf. So we want to go ahead and place an interlibrary loan to get a copy for the patron uh, while we hunt down what might have happened to our copy. So I'm going to change the status of this request from awaiting approval to approved send. So I change the status here and then I click submit. And now my request is no longer awaiting approval. It is added to my pending list. And I can see what I have pending. Here are all the things that I placed requests for today. So it's a good habit to get into to just take a look at your request manager uh, when you finish placing your requests each time to see if there is anything that requires your attention while you are there. 
If you have any questions about how to place interlibrary loans through the NAES ILL system, please call the help desk at 603-271-2141 or send us an email at the address on your screen. Thank you for watching.